All right, going to show you yet more proof of Steven Anderson, Stevie Boy Wonder Anderson, out there in Tempe, Arizona, teaching against, again, his own Trinity, Trinity Doctrine. The guy is constantly contradicting himself. This time, he's teaching against the Catholic Trinitarian doctrine of God being three persons. Okay, uh, just, I'm going to show you the clips. Here's the first one where he says that the word persons is not biblical. Now, I want to say something about that. I say amen to that, and I'll get into that later on. Now, watch what he says. He says that the word persons is not biblical in reference to the Godhead. It's really not even that hard to understand, because if you think about us as human beings, you know, we have three elements to us, too, the body, the soul, and the spirit. And all of them are one person. I mean, you wouldn't say that it's three different people. Now, some people will use the word the three persons of the Godhead, which is an extra biblical term. And then people who don't believe in the Trinity kind of freak out about that term. So I'll just skip that term. I don't use that term because it's not biblical and it just confuses people and makes people panic. So I don't want to panic anybody. But the thing is, there are three in the Godhead. If you don't like the three persons analogy, then just call it the three in one. These three are one. Just call it the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, like I said earlier, I say amen to that. There's no scripture that says God is three persons, plural. The, the word persons, plural word persons, is never referenced to God, to the Godhead. Let me point that out. Okay, there's four times the word person is used in reference to God, and none of it is plural. All of it is singular. Okay, Job chapter 13, verse 7 to 8. Matthew chapter 27, verse 24. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 10. Sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I do apologize, 2, verse 10. And Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. All those verses make, use the word singular word person to refer to God, the Godhead. That's simple. So, and by the way, too, I'll, I'll summarize what I believe about the Godhead at the end of this video, but I've, I've done it in other ones, but I'll, I'll do it again in this video. Uh, but it's just funny how Anderson is, again, just contradicting himself. Now watch this other clip where Anderson says that God is one person, not three. Okay. Now, a lot of people become confused by this doctrine and say, you know, I just don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me. But let me just try to explain it to you in the best way that I know how. I think the best way to liken the Trinity is to liken it unto our human selves. Because we are three-part beings, in a sense. Because we are body, soul, and spirit. But yet, we make up one person. You know, we wouldn't say that I am three separate people. I am three separate individuals because I am a body, a soul, and a spirit. We know that there's only one Steven Anderson here. But there's Steven Anderson, the body, Steven Anderson, the soul, and Steven Anderson, the spirit. Now, when I die... The Bible says the body without the spirit is dead. So when the body dies, the spirit leaves the body, which is why over and over again, the Bible calls dying, giving up the ghost. Yeah. He gave up the ghost. That's when the spirit leaves the body. So if I were to fall over dead right now, my spirit would depart my body and would be with the Lord in heaven. Because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We are confident and willing, the Bible says, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Yeah. I have a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith. He's saying, you know, I want to stick around on this earth for your benefit, but I'd rather depart and be with Christ. See, the spirit leaves the body and departs to be with Christ. The body remains on this earth. It's not like when a Christian dies, there's just a pile of clothes there. And, you know, the whole body, the spirit, the soul, everything went to heaven. It's still there. We look at it, it's there. I mean, when an unsaved person dies, they don't go to hell right then and there with their body, soul, and spirit, do they? No, the body is still there. The spirit goes down into hell, but the body is left behind there. Okay, so... If I were to die, my dead body would be laying here. And if you walked up to that dead body and identified it to the police and they said, hey, you know, we need to identify this body. Is this Steven Anderson? And you said, yes. Would that be accurate? Yeah, yeah that, that's Steven Anderson, right? But what about if I walked up to someone in heaven in the spirit, in the soul, and someone walked up to me and said, you're Steven Anderson. Wouldn't that be accurate? Yeah. Now, are, are they two different people? No, it's the same person. 
But the body and the spirit, there's been a separation that has taken place geographically because one of them is in heaven and one of them's on this earth. That is the same way it is with God in the sense that God is the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and that there was a separation that took place in the sense that Jesus Christ was in bodily form on this earth, hanging on the cross, and said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Right? So there's a separation there, okay, that took place between the Father and the Son. But that doesn't mean that Jesus is not divine. It doesn't mean that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are not all equally God. It's just that they're separated at that time. So when we think about this doctrine, that's one way that could help you, you know, put this together and say, okay, I can kind of understand that. You could think of Jesus as the body, and you could think of this, the Holy Spirit as the spirit and God the Father as the soul, as it were. You know, that would be a way to liken it in our minds. Now, once again, I have to say amen to what he said there. There is no scripture saying God is three persons. First John chapter five or seven just says these three are one. It does not say these three persons are one are one God. It just says these three are one. There are three that bear record in heaven. These three are one. Paraphrasing, of course. But the reason why I'm pointing that out is because he's just contradicting himself once again on his own Trinity doctrine. Because he says that saying that, that God is one person or Jesus is the Father, that's heresy. And in one video, he says it's, quote, dumb crap. But here he's preaching that exact same doctrine. It seems that old sloppy Steve can't be can't be consistent on his own doctrine. Now here's another clip where again, once again, Anderson says God is one person, but this time he says one person, three components. Watch this. See, God is three in one. And the Muslims will accuse us of believing in polytheism, multiple God. No, we believe in one God. But that one God is made up of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Just like the one person, Stephen Anderson, is made up of body, soul, and spirit. There aren't three Stephen Andersons, but there are three components. The body, the soul, and the spirit. Now, can the body and soul and spirit be separated? Absolutely. Because if I were to die right now, my body would remain, but my soul would go to heaven. So there'd be a separation. Does that mean that there are now two Stephen Andersons? No, there's only one Stephen Anderson. And if you looked at that dead body and said, this is Stephen Anderson, that would be accurate. If you were identifying it for the police and say, hey, this is Stephen Anderson, accurate. And up in heaven, if you were to meet me there, you'd say Stephen Anderson, and it would be accurate. Well, how can they both be Stephen Anderson? Well, it's not really that complicated. And this is the same thing with God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, these three are one. Well... We've seen yet more proof that sloppy Steve can't be con can't be consistent and is contradicting himself on his own Trinity doctrine. Now let me, let me just summarize what I believe about the Godhead. There's uh, one God, okay, one person, body, soul, and spirit. Okay, man is made in the image of God. Uh, Genesis chapter one, verse twenty-six and twenty-seven. Genesis chapter five, verse one. Genesis chapter nine, verse six. Uh, James chapter three, verse nine, and uh, First Corinthians, sorry, chapter eleven, verse seven. Man has a body, soul, and spirit. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-three. And same with God. God has a body, Jesus Christ. God has a soul, God the Father. God has a spirit, the Holy Ghost. These three are one, 1 John 5, 7. And I proved that in my other blog post that uh, the body, soul, and spirit, uh, body, soul, and spirit aspect of God. That's simple. So I wanted to point that out. But just showing how, how sloppy Steve is, again, contradicting himself on his own Trinity doctrine and how he, he just can't be consistent. He says, oh, it's just a couple of times I, I've, you know, I've said the wrong thing. It's not just a couple of examples, just clip after clip after clip of him contradicting himself on his own trinity doctrine his own catholic trinity it's insanity but what do you expect from old sloppy steve so don't be deceived by anderson's new ifb cult may the grace of our lord jesus christ be with all the brethren goodbye Thank you.